Hello, Pod Fam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I am good, Laura. How are you today? I am good. We are over Thanksgiving. We are over Black Friday, and we are Woo! on to the holidays. So, you know, Woo! there's just something in the air right now, and it's just feeling kind of magical. Oh, I'm so hyped up. I don't know what it is, but like I have a renewed love for the holidays this year and it's like literally come out of nowhere. Oh, that's so exciting. I know. And I'm like literally obsessed. I think it's probably because it's like the first year that me and my partner are together. So we're like doing that fun first Christmas together stuff. And like obviously it's our first Christmas and our new apartment and everything. So it's like all really special. But I think too, like after the last couple of years, like the holidays last year kind of (laughs) sucked. Because we still couldn't really do anything. Yep. Yeah, it was pretty quiet at my house, that's for sure. Yeah, so I think it's kind of, um, it feels like people everywhere are a lot more like, let's really see it all through this year. And I think that's nice. Yeah, yeah. And like, I kind of love that you guys are having your first Christmas uh, in your new place because, yeah, yeah I know, like, like for me, uh, Last year and this year, and like really for the past couple of years, I haven't made like a huge deal out of Christmas. Mm-hmm. And mainly it's because like like I don't really have my own space to decorate. And my boyfriend and I, like we had this conversation um, last week even that I kind of like had the urge to go out and get Christmas decorations and I wanted to do things up. But I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, but like I'm going to have to cart them around to like the next place that we actually move in and hopefully it is just us. So mm-hmm. I feel like when I get that moment, hopefully next Christmas, um, I'll just have that renewed excitement and I can like have friends over, have family over, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, I really um, went over the top in yes, like the did. best way, in yes. the best way. And I love it. It's so much fun, especially because like – see, I find – Sometimes it's weird with couples because like oftentimes you see somebody like a couple where it's like one is super obsessed with it and the other one's like, eh, might not even like it. Right. Where we're both like, I'm pretty sure it was a conversation that we had when we first started dating where we were like, are you a bit messed up about Christmas? (laughs) Same. All right, let's go. So we like went to winners and got all of our decorations. We got our Christmas tree and all of the ornaments for that. So that was a lot of fun. And we have a nice big porch outside in for our apartment. So we strung up some Christmas lights too. And it's actually the first time ever where I've had multicolored Christmas lights. Fun. I, you know what? Those are the yeah. classics. I love they are. the multicolored Christmas lights. Yeah. I genuinely don't think I've ever had them. I know my grandmother – on their Christmas tree, they have a multicolored lights for that tree. But other than that, never. So that's been really fun, except unfortunately, they shine right into our bedroom window. Oh, <laughs> so we have to turn them off before we go to sleep because I swear to God, the other night my body was going through some weird circadian rhythm mess up because it was <laughs> like, why is it so bright? <laughs> right. So, yeah. But I've got my Christmas tree up. I decorated my mantle, which is super cute, with some stockings and stuff. Uh, We had to learn the hard lesson today where um, my partner was like, oh, well, maybe we can put the stocking presents in the stockings where they're hung on the mantle. And I was just like, they will come crashing down. Probably. We do that. And he was like, no, no, it'll be fine. So I picked up two presents and I put them in just two presents don't weigh very much and you just see it it just goes flying (laughs) it's just like slowly inching down until you hear crash in the middle of the night and didn't you tell me that your boyfriend is a peeker when it comes to christmas presents yes he is and it's funny because we're both just as bad as each other but every so often he'll try to like catch me off guard Because I'll be like, oh, your big Christmas gift is coming. And he's just like, oh, really? Well, what is it? It must be so special for it to be taking so long to get here. (laughs) And I'm just like, let's not spoil it. Let's not. Let's keep a little surprise. 
Because there was one thing that I did have to tell him what it was because it was like it was a watch. Yeah. And I was like, I did show it to him because I'm like, I'm not going to buy you a watch and then have you hate it. Yeah, there. that is the thing. Like there are just some gifts that you need the approval, the input on because – yeah. Like, like you really just – the point is that you're getting it for them mm-hmm. and, you know, you want it to be exactly what, what they want, especially with something personal like a watch. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know what it is. Like, guys, when they have a watch, they wear it literally every day. So I'm like, all right, I should make sure you like it. But is your boyfriend a peeker? No, he's not. But he – oh, he is the hardest – to buy for uh, now we have been together this will be our seventh or eighth christmas together i don't know we started dating like are you kidding me i know right we we what? started dating like just before christmas so we didn't really like do anything i don't think for that like obviously first christmas like we had literally gone on like one or two dates mm-hmm. um so this must be maybe our seventh that we're celebrating together so we don't we don't necessarily like go all out and he is he's one of those frustrating ones where like for black friday he just gets what he wants like i know like the man the, had, like, the man wants for nothing like he just kind of goes out and gets them gets it himself so i don't necessarily do like big big presents um we do more like sentimental things mm-hmm. um so like we get kind of creative and it's just like Things that we can do together or like an experience, um, someplace like we want to go, that's more what Mm -hmm. we do because like for material things, like neither of us really want for something. Like one thing that is like the running joke is I've always gotten him a pair of underwear, socks, and a white t-shirt for every Christmas. I love it. Because if I get him one of those things, I can throw out one with a stain or a hole in it. Um, (laughs) It's a fight, but at least he has a replacement. So that is like the standard Christmas Mm -hmm. present. And then like we always do something on top for each other. Uh, I think last year we didn't do too much because, you know, we were redecorating um, our room. So we like were already spending quite a bit of money on furniture. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we did last year. Like we bought a new bed. We bought two dressers. We have like a fireplace, a TV. Like, you know, we kind of did the outfitting thing around the holidays. So that stood in for Christmas. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes this year. I think we're both just going to do something small. Um, For us, you know, it's, it's all about juggling the family dinners. Yeah. So... That'll be interesting this year because his family has like three or four. Oh, God. Mine has like one or two. Uh, so I think we have the right schedule going this year and we'll just see how how it goes because this will be like the first Christmas morning that I'm not at like my mom's house, which I have done for like mm-hmm. ever. Um, your enti- Literally your entire life. Yeah, so it'll be like the first time him and I are going to my mom's for for Christmas Day. And so we'll see how it feels. Like um, there's like some traditions that we do at my mom's house every year. I'm sure those will continue. It's just going to feel like – I think I'll just feel more of an adult. Yeah. I say this at 29. Um, <laughs> for Christmas. I'll just- finally feel like an adult when I go to my mom's for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of going more for like the afternoon dinner thing just because we live in the city and we'll be heading up north. So I'll report back after the holidays and and let you guys know. But Rachel, we never shared what we were drinking today. What are you drinking? You stole my line. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say that. Okay. Um, I have something called toasted s'mores. Ooh. Um, That sounds festive. It is, but like I don't – it doesn't smell or taste like s'mores. So oh. I feel like they just ran out of ideas. Oh, yeah. Man. It is It is good. Like it is okay. very earthy, but I wouldn't have called it toasted s'mores. All right. So it, we'll it's, a that in mind. it's a poo It's a poo So yeah. What are you drinking? 
I'm having a peppermint hot chocolate because I thought that would be kind of festive. Oh, that's so nice. Yes. I love it. Nice and simple, but always a classic when it comes to the holidays. And, you know, with the holidays, like um, for our listeners, like we acknowledge that not everyone celebrates Christmas, obviously. Yes. There are lots of different religions and practices around the world. And so, you know, we absolutely respect those. And if you don't celebrate the holidays at all, we just wish you and your family the best for this season. Mm -hmm. And today we just kind of wanted to share some of our favorite things, some things that we find like a struggle and how we Mm -hmm. try to deal with them. But of course, you know, on our Instagram, if you want to share like your traditions for this time of year with your friends and family, like please share them with us because we both love learning Mm -hmm. about how different cultures might, might celebrate this time of year. Exactly. Yes, please, please share. Since we celebrate Christmas, we are going to talk about our love and also the stress of Christmas. So why don't we start off, just to start it off on a positive note, of some of our favorite things about this time of year. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, I want to hear your stories. I feel like you prepared a lot of them. (laughs) And I feel like you're just, sometimes I feel like your life needs to be a sitcom. Oh, (laughs) with with the stories that occur that oftentimes I am a part of. So yeah, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rachel's going to be featured a little bit and I just, I'm going to start off with my favorite things. So one thing I'm an absolute nerd about and like I live for in the holidays is wrapping presents. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. I am freaking obsessed. Yeah. I know. Like lose it over uh a nicely wrapped gift. I'll be on the floor like wrapping up a gift and I'll be like perfectly straightening out the edges. Mm. And then like I'm like, how do I want to tie this bow? Do I want like those kind of like big bows or do I want to get just like a ribbon? ribbon? Yeah. Do I want to get like a cloth ribbon where you tie a bow yourself? Oh, Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you know what I got I got like real into at winners this year was gift tags. Oh, gift tags are fun. You know, I feel like that's a – it's an underrated opportunity to really be a little bit different. Um, So for me, like I am someone – I actually like plan out my theme every year for wrapping. Um, Mm -hmm. So I've done – one of my favorite years actually was when I got just like brown paper and twine and then I did like stamps – on yep. all of the presents um, to kind of do like my own wrapping paper. But I've done like years with gold, years with all red. Like, I don't know. I just, I love picking a theme. And mm-hmm. uh, there was one Christmas a few years ago that I was helping my friend out at her clothing store. Mm-hmm. And so I was like the official present wrapper. It was like dream come true job. <laughs> like I loved it. Cause even like when I'm with other people, I'll be like, do you need your presents wrapped? I can do that. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like I, I still people presents, presents and I'm like, don't give me things that you're giving me, but give me everything else and I will wrap it. And so like even even when I was a kid, I was like the official wrapper for both my present, my my parents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would like wrap all their presents for each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so when I was working at my friend's clothing store wrapping the presents, she had one of those wrapping tables oh, where like amazing. the paper's on the roll, it's got the cutter. And oh my God, my mind was blown. It like took oh. things to a new level. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had way too much fun. So that is one of my first favorite things with the holidays is wrapping. And to go with that, like also just giving gifts. Like yeah. I I truly love coming up with that perfect thing that I want to get for someone I love and just the joy Mm-hmm. of of giving it to them like even if I got like nothing I'm like so happy because I'm just like oh, I found this thing and you're like mm-hmm. you really wanted it or like it just makes me think of you um I don't know I get like a weird high oh, over same. that as well oh, same yeah and then like just rolling off of that even um just the feeling of this time of year it seems like people are just like you know a little lighter and like you know we're, we're going through some cold dark nights right now but Mm-hmm. You know, there's beautiful lights outside and just, I know not everyone's into Christmas music and carols, but like 
I don't know, when you just hear that a little bit, I just feel like it brightens your mood. And I know like some people feel the complete opposite and I I totally respect that and I'm I'm there for you. But um, yeah, that's just one thing I love. Now, I have a couple other things that I really like about Christmas, but Rachel, how about you uh, You catch up here on on your favorite things? Sure. Well, I definitely agree with both points, one and two there. Uh, jumping into the Christmas carols, I am a nerd. Yes, we like, know. We, we, I think we've uh, brought this up on previous episodes. I know. I, I've been good this year. Like I listened to them like here and there. Uh, until like when we're recording this, it's December first. So God knows I am partying now. They're 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 pumping on the on the they, stereo right now. They are pumping. But I don't know if you agree with this. But I don't like modern Christmas music. Like on Spotify, give me the traditional Christmas or Christmas classics playlist, and we're good. But give me anything else, and I'm like, what is this? And that was going to be my question. Who is your favorite artist? Like, are you a, like a Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra? Um, like, like where are you at with your Christmas carols? So I don't have a favorite artist, but Judy Garland. Mm, yes. Her Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Oh, it just, it makes my heart warm. Um, also, like, I think it's just because of the fact that my mom had this CD when I was a kid and it was drilled into me whenever we would decorate for Christmas. But the Josh Groban Christmas album. Oh my God, we have that from, same album. <laughs> from like literally the 90s. I yeah. love it. It is yes. impeccable. I think I just love his voice because he's like, you know, it's he's got some show tunes vibe to him. It's awesome. So love him. And um, hmm, who else? I think we have to throw some respect to Michael Buble who appears oh, oh, every yes. Christmas. He, he is literally like, he is the one modern, I don't even know. He's He is just a Christmas classic in himself. I love him. But also uh, Burl Ives. Oh, yes. Who did all the songs from the original um, Rudolph movie. I love yep. him as well. Yes. And you know what? The Glee cast Christmas songs. Oh, I've never heard those before. I will listen to them. I actually really, really enjoy them because it feels like um, – it's just a nice showcase. So it's just, yeah, you should check them out. They're kind of fun. Okay. Well, maybe I'll try it this year. And there is like one current artist that I, okay, I have a guilty pleasure. I enjoy his Christmas song and it's Justin Bieber's Under the Mistletoe. Oh, oh that is. It's just so freaking I, catchy. It's <laughs> it just makes so feel, good. It makes me feel special. <laughs> I like how you were – how the way you presented it was like he just came out with a Christmas song right now and it's just like – wasn't that like 10 years ago? Well, no. I meant he, like he's a current artist, you know, like – Oh, yes, yes. I'm pretty he's sure just, he just got nominated for a Grammy. So he's a current artist. I think so. And I know that song came out like at least 10 years ago. But it was, um, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Love the Christmas music. It's been very fun. Also like a good instrumental either mm. like strings or piano like I'll just play it in the background while I'm like cleaning or just hanging out in the house and it's really really nice and you listen to the Trans-Siberian Orchestra yes oh so good and actually my boyfriend we went I think maybe a couple years into our relationship we saw them live oh my god Amazing. it was so good so good cool so yeah like uh the Christmas canon recording that they did mm -hmm. iconic yes. so i love that and then my favorite favorite tradition and i am the designated person for this in my family is just decorating the tree love it i am the designated christmas tree decorator in my household there is a system <laughs> for how we do it and um no one get in my way basically. Yes. And we actually did it uh, last weekend. Oh, fantastic. So just, just before the start of December. And it was really fun because it was like my boyfriend was with me at my parents' house. And then like my both my mom and my dad were there as well. And my dad was helping my mom put some stuff up on their mantle. And my poor boyfriend, his experience of decorating my parents Christmas tree with me for the first time was hilarious because he would go to do something and I'm like no 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 that doesn't go there yeah it's like I know and we did this differently on our own tree but like there's a system here in there's this house. a system 
Yeah, my mom looks at him and she just goes, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. Anything, you're just going to be vetoed. <laughs> just grin and bear it and do what she says. Yeah, and, pretty um, much. One of my favorite traditions from it because my uh, ancestors fairly recently are from Norway. And uh, in Norway, I, I don't know if it's the same now, but it was when my grandfather was there. But they string um, little flags on their tree. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I mean, if you come over around Christmas, you'll see it. But it's like literally on like little pieces of string, just little paper Norwegian flags. So my dad, uh, when he was visiting there one time, got a big package of them. And it's like he – it's the last thing we ever put on. And he doesn't participate in actually like putting stuff on the tree, but he will make sure that those flags are on it. <laughs> He's the grandmaster. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really fun. It's actually, it's, it's actually so nice too because, yeah, he doesn't – like ever since – like we're older, we're not children mm-hmm. anymore. So he's – like he used to when we were little – but he always comes and he helps me put those on at the end. So I find it really nice. Oh, that's a cute tradition. Yeah. So it's fun. And I think it keeps it different. You know, it's like something that when people come over, they're like, oh, that's weird. What's the story behind that? Yeah. No, I love um, – because I know like everyone, they kind of have like trendy trees right now where like all the ornaments are the same. They're all uniform and color coordinated. But what I love about – my Christmas tree the most is all the ornaments on there. And I know like I, we've shared this in a past mm-hmm. episode, um, you know, whenever we would go somewhere, like my mom was the one who would drag us to a Christmas store just to pick out yeah. like an ornament for our mm-hmm. tree. But over like, okay, like I'm almost 30 and just the ornaments that we've collected just during my lifetime, mm-hmm. they all have a story. And I know a lot of people in my family, they just like, give ornaments as gifts Mm -hmm. but it's like one of those special things because like you always know who it came from and it's like usually something really personal like I've got a couple horse ones um Mm -hmm. that are just absolutely stunning uh from like my aunts and uncles Mm -hmm. um and then like for my mom and dad like you know they both have ornaments still from when they were children Mm -hmm. so I just feel like the tree is a just amazing opportunity to honor those traditions and remember. Yeah. And then like, you know, as families grow and they add on, you just keep adding on to this like story almost yep. of a Christmas tree. Getting sentimental. <laughs> Getting sentimental. <laughs> well, uh, a nice break from that. Well, it's not a break. It is a bit sentimental. But my mom, as a fun little uh, aside here, she – pulled my boyfriend aside over the weekend and was just like, I need you to come look at these. And she pulls out these two little hands, these two little baby hands. And she's like, okay, so this one was for brother number one. And this one was for brother number two. Have you noticed that there isn't a third <laughs> as in, as in my hand? And she was like, yeah, I got bored and tired. So she doesn't have one. And I was just like, oh, thanks, God. mom. I'm going to go make one now. I know, right? It'll be like hand. Your, your brother's baby hands and then your adult hand. I know. <laughs> the so, forgotten child. <laughs> I know. So that I think that's just what comes with uh, being the third child. But every time I put those up, I'm just like, why don't I have a hand? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know her very well, but my mom was a crafty lady until about 1999 when she was like, I don't got time for this. It's a no from me. So, yeah. Do yeah. you have any any other favorites? Like I have one, but it's like a family tradition. So I don't know if we're going to put that in another section. Okay. Well, just like some other things that I love. Of course, the food. You know, it's just yeah. an excuse to eat whatever you want. And then this is something like my family does Christmas Day is – we get going with the mimosas. Nice. Like first thing we've I got. I remember that. And, we, and we've done it a couple of different ways. One year I got like super fancy. Um, mm-hmm. Usually it's it's either like a cranberry and champagne or an orange juice and champagne. You know, we keep it, keep it simple. Um, one year though, I got some apple cider mm-hmm. and I made cider mimosas. And yeah. so we have like these um, beautiful champagne flutes that we, we only bring out for the holidays. And I, I did a apple rim with cinnamon and sugar. Nice. And then it was like cider and, and champagne. And oh my God, like you were on a sugar high. You were kind of <laughs> drunk. 
it was it was a wild Christmas. I'm pretty sure the story that I have coming out, I'm pretty sure it was that year that I did those. Um, and then another thing is like Bailey's in your coffee. Like yes. I'm not a big drinker. I maybe have like a couple of drinks every month, mm-hmm. um, give or take. But just around the holidays, like I'm all of a sudden like, oh, let's have a mimosa for breakfast. Oh, let's <laughs> let's have some Baileys in my coffee. Like I just kind of like flip a switch. <laughs> let's just, just drink like, all day. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm just like the liqueurs are out. We're getting fancy. And I don't know mm-hmm. what it is about. I just only do it around this time of year. So I that love is one it. thing I do love about the holidays is the cocktails. Nice. Well, since you shared one of your more family-based traditions, I will share mine. And um, this is such a random one, but every Christmas Eve, we rent out the local um, – it's kind of a middle-of-the-of-nowhere hockey arena. Did oh, I ever yeah. tell you about that? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Oh, my God. Have I not? I wow. So. I mean, we've literally been doing it for like eight years. What but the hell? Because I know because like my dad always played hockey and then obviously my two brothers did when they were little. And um, like when it originally started, we had more people coming on my dad's side of the family who's very sports based. So basically they started to do that. So they would have like a little pickup hockey game on Christmas Eve. Oh, that's fun. So some years I didn't go because there's it's kind of terrifying. I don't think I'd want to play hockey with your family. I don't think. No, I'd see, I, I don't think I'd make it out alive. I know you just see me skating up in the top corner, and they're like, "Come play!" And I'm like, "No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good right here." But um, yeah, there's there's definitely been uh, many of a Christmas injuries mm-hmm, I'm during sure. Christmas pickup hockey. Um, one of them was me last year where um. I never learned how to hockey stop ever. And uh I I just I just fell down flat on my knees and I thought I was gonna die. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. You don't bounce like you used to. Nope. No, you don't. So yeah, that's one of my favorites. It's actually really fun. I it, one year if you guys are like up and you're gonna be like with your mom, then you should definitely come join because it would be funny. Well, my boyfriend has the hockey gear, so he would exactly. be into it. He would. He would be. He would be all about the aggressive uh, hockey play. I know. Could you imagine? Oh my god! Could you imagine putting your boyfriend in the hockey game with my family? Uh, we should I'll do it. To, I will have to stitch someone back together. I just know. I know. It. You need um go reevaluate your Christmas plans. Like yeah. Right now, I, I I you know what I might have to mention it to him. Maybe we're gonna shake things up this year. We will see. We'll, we'll see. Even if you just come up and then drive right back down. All right. We have a plan. Yeah. So. Oh, and then there's like one more tradition. It's not a family one. It's I guess it's like a family friend one, but as everyone knows, got the horses. And mm-hmm. one thing, okay, going back to the coffee with Bailey's, um, is my coach who, you know, also looks after my, my horses. Um, I would always go do the barn with her. Christmas day and that was always just really special and I don't know it was just something fun like you know we'd have coffee and Bailey's we would just take our time and like hang out with the horses and just and do that and then I would go Mm -hmm. do like the Christmas tree stuff so that was something I always enjoyed and then even for the past couple of years um I would go to like a Christmas uh service Mm mm-hmm with with her and and her mom mm-hmm. um and a couple of other people from the barn and so that that was always a really fun tradition I love as well that. and then we would like go back and like have kind of a christmas eve dinner all together nice so yeah that's just something i've always loved nice yeah anyway any Stressy. more traditions for you or is that that's all no. you're sharing for right now that's all I got for now. Now I'm like, we got to talk about the stressing. Yes. We love some holiday stress. Oh, yeah. I don't. I Ugh. don't. I'm going to start us off right away. Okay. Um, I despise Christmas shopping in a mall. Mm-hmm. Black Friday onward. People are always like, why do you start shopping for gifts so early? And I'm like, because if I have to go into a store – I don't care what deal I would get on Black Friday. 
I am not going. Yes, it's exhausting. I think because I'm very introverted and like I have a bit of social anxiety that it just it overstimulates me to a point where like I just I want to go home. And then like I'm making like kind of stupid purchases where like I just want to get out. So I'll just be like, oh, that's okay. Buy it and go. So I have always started like the weekend before. Like I, I, I'm like, okay, the last the cutoff date is the weekend before Black Friday where you still have some deals. Yeah, and honestly, like those deals, they're always on. Things are different maybe down in the States, but in Canada, like our deals are like not changing. It's the exact same thing that they had on sale like the month before. So yeah, I feel like it's not really as big of a rush Mm -hmm. to get things done. Especially not this year. Yeah, yeah, especially this year. And like last year even, you know, everything was online because you literally couldn't go. Mm-hmm. to a mall to shop um and even you know I always try to go local first because yeah. I, I do really want to support like businesses in in my hometown over you know the big corporate box store yeah and that was like the same with me like pretty much everything else has been just in our local area but it was like I had to go to Sephora so I had to I had to bite the bullet and go But I love Christmas shopping because I love picking out gifts and it's just – I find it a lot of fun. I think it's just as it gets more intense because, you know, sometimes people don't start until beginning of December. So as the crowds get bigger, I just get more stressed out and then it's just – it kind of loses its fun for me. Yeah. Then it's like this is an obligation to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's why like I like to do it earlier because then it's like I'm still in that, oh, this is so fun mood and you know I might get a little bit stressed out but it's not too bad yeah for sure now rolling off of this topic um something like I struggle with and I feel like almost everyone does is spending a lot of money around the holidays I don't want to talk about the amount of money I spent this year I'm actually kind of sad are you a little embarrassed (laughs) I'm not embarrassed because I really wanted to do it So like it was more like I did make a choice, but definitely now I'm like, did we have to make that choice? I know, right? It's like it's all good when you're ringing up the credit card, but then when you open your statement bill, you're like, oh God, what did I buy? (laughs) I know. And I'm just – I feel like you and I are pretty similar. Like I don't like having a balance going over the next statement. Yeah, you kind of want to try and keep it cleaned up as most best you can. I know. So like I'm like – I'm like I don't want to pay credit card interest. I don't want any of that. And then I'm just like, (laughs) this hurts. (laughs) Yeah. So I find like you go through different stages uh, Mm because I remember, you know, obviously when I was a kid, I would kind of like pick presents out for my parents and then like they would have to buy them for me because, you know, I had had zero dollars to my name. Um, Mm -hmm. And then once I had like my first part-time job and stuff, I remember – the first year that I actually bought Christmas presents like with my own money. It was the best year because I was so excited to be able to do it by myself. Um, But then like, you know, that time in my life and I was in school. So it's not like I really had any expenses. Like I was a high schooler. And then when it came to university, um, you know, the cash, the cash flow got a little tight and I couldn't, do that as much and I I really had to tell friends and family like you know I'm sorry like I I just can't like I really just can't like you know I don't have a job I'm in school full time I just mm-hmm. don't have the extra money to be buying presents and you know what most people were like that's totally fine like I did mm-hmm. not lose any friendships or or love for not buying christmas gifts So, you know, if anyone's in that position, even if you're not in school, like even if you're just having a big year, you know, you just Mm -hmm. bought a house or something like that, you know, I don't think we should feel obligated to have to spend a lot of money. Like to me in all those years that like I couldn't really buy Christmas presents, I would still like have dinner with all those friends or, you Mm -hmm. know, just spend time with people and that was more memorable than anything I would have bought them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just something we have to be really honest about. And, 
you know, now I'm like a little bit more established in my career. So like, I'm very grateful I'm able to get some presents, but still like, I don't want to be breaking the bank yeah, over presents because like the people who I'm buying for, you know, I would, I would hate for them ever have to do that for me. So mm-hmm. I think it's all about being like just open and honest of of what you can actually do. And you shouldn't feel bad if, you know, one year is a little bit tight because, you know, we just went through a pandemic. Um, lots of people were not working for the past yeah. almost two years. And there should be no shame about not being able to get big flashy fancy gifts for anyone. Yeah. Or even just like if you're in that position and you still want to give them something, just make it. Yeah. Oh God. There was one year I made mugs for everyone, and I like. Oh, I I love that mug. Painted them, and every quote on it was like very personal to that mm-hmm. person. And you know what? I open up people's covers, and they all still have their mugs. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that like Dollarama purchase. <laughs> I'm very upset because you gave me one, and it said it very explicitly: don't put it in the dishwasher. Oh my God, I remember, and you washed it. (laughs) No, I didn't. I didn't. I was so strict on not putting it in the dishwasher. And I had this one roommate in college um, when we had an apartment that had a dishwasher. I think it was like in my second year or something. And she just didn't see it and just washed it. And it ruined it. And I was so upset. So it broke my heart. I'll make you another mug. Thank you. And I'm. And I remember you made one year um, like peppermint body scrub. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that. Yeah. I was just I thinking I swear through all it. of university, I literally just made presents. And I know. You know what? People loved them. So. They, I did. Great. It was great. There was, there was a strong, strong essence of peppermint in that though. I remember sure. it would like burn my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure like I got a couple bottles of like peppermint extract because I I made a few batches like for everyone had like food coloring it was like sugar and olive oil I think with like peppermint and I'm pretty sure everyone got like half a bottle of peppermint extract each so like I know that shit was spicy on your on your skin (laughs) it was it felt so good though I remember and I think um I don't know what had happened to it I think I had like a quarter left and I think I like went away for a period of time and then I think my parents cleaned it out of the of the shower. they were probably like what is this shit <laughs> i know they were like this is this is weird but you know you can you can make very sentimental stuff and i think sometimes that's even it's even better if you make those kind of things cuz uh i think i showed you like videos of it but last year i made like a whole puppy book for somebody yes that was beautiful where like i you know basically just went to walmart and bought uh like wooden letters that I could paint to spell out the puppy's name. And like, I think the biggest expense was buying the scrapbook to stick the pictures in and printing the pictures, which was like maybe $40 at Walmart. And I printed a lot of pictures. Yeah, no, like there are just such easy ways to make presents. And I'm just Mm -hmm. thinking back on that body scrub, how I used like food coloring in it and like like red and green food coloring. I'm really hoping that didn't transfer to anyone's skin. (laughs) Just now that I'm thinking about it. It's fine. It's fine. We're all over it. No one Um, one was green, right? (laughs) No. I mean, I don't remember being green. I can't speak for other people, but. Okay. Yeah. Because like, I mean, you would never forget me. (laughs) I dyed your skin. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure we have some friends that also received the green peppermint body scrub who listen to this show. So they'll tell us. Oh, I'm sure. There's someone I'm thinking of right now. Who might be listening? And I'm pretty sure she got a green body scrub. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure I would have heard about it if I accidentally dyed her skin green. Yeah. <laughs> um, let us know. Send Laura a text. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you have another struggle, Rachel? Uh, yeah. Let me pull out my list. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I think we can talk – you talked about it a bit Uh, earlier in this episode, but I think there is a lot of family pressure and just social pressure in general. So I feel like you can speak a bit more um, just on the family side because like you have more Christmases that you need to navigate because like I only got the two, so it's not too bad. But like – Yeah, and you're both like 15 minutes away from each other. Mine are like two hours. (laughs) Yeah, like literally we can have Christmas morning with my 
parents and be at his parents in 15 minutes for Christmas afternoon. Um, but I've definitely struggled with like social pressures mm-hmm. of feeling like um, suddenly like even friends are coming home for Christmas or somebody wants to have a Christmas party, but they live in an entirely different city, but they want you to come. So there is like, you know, kind of going back to our cheap hangouts with friends episode that is like costs a lot of time and money sometimes. So that yeah. feels stressful, especially when it's like, um, you know, you've already like it's like, OK, well, I've already bought gifts for my family and a select few friends, but now I have all these other friends that want to go for dinner. So now I need to spend a bunch of money on that. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like everything hits you at once. And yeah, going back yeah, to the a money, lot all at once. it's like, OK, I've done gifts. I've done dinners like I'm doing parties. I'm spending gas on driving everywhere. Like it really adds up, you know, like it's it's hard when you just have that many expenses that – are somewhat unexpected like you never know when you're gonna get invited to a last minute party yeah no it's 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 really tough because I just it's a time of year where I don't know how to say no right and then suddenly I'm driving three hours to go to a Christmas party yeah all of a sudden you have like 10 invites and they're like all the day apart (laughs) yeah so like I think a hard one that I had to learn with this is just to be very this is going to sound bad, but be kind of selective. Yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, though. No. And, you know, like I have you, who I see all the time anyway, but we always do something around Christmas, and that's like a priority for me. And then I have like two other friends where I'm like, hey, I'm not going to let the Christmas season go by without seeing them. Right. But definitely I've had to lean out my Christmas social gathering activities over time. Yeah, definitely it gets – tough and you know anyone who is in a relationship they will also know the struggle of having to hit up everyone's Christmas dinner and different holiday dinners because like you just cannot be in three places at once sometimes Um, four yeah yeah like and this is something that's going to be a bit new for me so my boyfriend and I like we would always kind of do like Christmas parties together and like his family would have like some open house ones Mm -hmm. earlier in the month. But then when it came to the actual like, you know, Christmas Eve through Boxing Day, that was always really tough because just with like the nature of my parents' work, you know, like sometimes like they, they only had Christmas Day that they could do it. And then they had to be like off doing the next thing um right after so it was kind of hard to overlap and that's why we never did so this will be the first year that we are um okay and especially with covid you know things are a little bit different than than normal Mm -hmm. so we're gonna try it out like we're doing kind of a christmas eve in the city christmas day up north and then back in the city for boxing day so we're not like too all over the place and we're gonna see how it goes And I know a lot of people, like, they alternate years. And I don't know, maybe, like, down the line we would do that. But I'm definitely not ready to give up my family dinner. Oh, God, this is going to become, like, a whole therapy session now. Oh, my God. (laughs) I feel like that's something that would be when I have children. Yeah. Kind of thing. Because, I mean, I'm – Thankfully, lucky enough at this moment in time, I don't know what will be what it will be like two, three years down the road. But like we live in the same area. Yeah, like you literally live in the middle of the two places you have to go. Yeah, but like I feel like if we ever moved away, then it would have to be like obviously they our parents still live close together, so it's not a huge deal. But if there was a chance that we all got scattered. Mm -hmm. I could see with children having to be like, okay, well, this year we'll go stay with your family and this year with mine. But I feel like when you're kind of like you're still young, like you don't have children that you need to cart around. You don't have to do the whole Christmas day with little kids thing, which is like a huge deal. Of course. I feel like it's easy. Like you just kind of do the driving. Like it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Yeah. And like the drive is nothing new for me. So like I'm just like – yeah, whatever, like, you know, going up here, going back, 
Um, yeah, like it's not like you're going to a different country. Yeah, and it's not like I'm doing all this driving in one day either. So, mm-hmm. like, especially like you just said, you know, we're young, we're pretty mobile. Um, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal this year. And then we'll just see how it mm-hmm. goes, you know. So, so that's definitely a struggle. Um, people have ideas. Let me know. Um, yeah, I have a question for you on that. Yeah. When do you think? Um, because obviously, like my family always does Christmas Eve. His family's cool with mainly doing Christmas Day dinner. So, but when do you think that age will come where you just kind of want to have Christmas Day with your partner at your own house by yourself? Mm. It's a hard like, question. Like, you guys? Yeah. I, I, okay, like, I'm just speaking off the top of my head right now, but like, I think if, if my boyfriend and I had our own, place Mm -hmm. I think I would have more of the feeling like I would want people to come to us yeah or I would want to have like the Christmas morning together Mm -hmm. I don't know I think it's so different when you don't have kids because like if I had kids I would be like my house (laughs) you know like like Christmas morning would have to be at my house because like that's what I grew up with yeah, um same and then figure out like because like even when I was growing up as a kid like my mom's side of the family was always Christmas day and my dad's side was always boxing day mm-hmm. and granted like we were not very scattered you know similar to you we we all lived in the same area so like it was never a thing where you know we only went to my mom's side for one year and then my dad's the other side mm-hmm. um so yeah I don't know I think it's just so different when you when you have kids Yeah, because it's also, you know, granted for my partner and I this year, because it's our first Christmas, we like are kind of going to have our own Christmas day on Christmas Eve because we have a couple more things to open. Like we're doing stockings and then like one or two larger gifts for each other. Yeah. We're just doing that before. But I also feel like, you know, after this year, we're probably going to be, we're probably going to chill a little bit. Oh, for sure. Like the first Christmas is always like a big deal, you know? Yeah. You, you just go, you just go balls to the wall apparently. But I feel like when it's just you and your partner, you maybe give each other like one or two things in a normal year. Like Christmas day is over in like two minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like for me, like I have siblings. So when we go over, like it still feels like a longer experience. So I feel like until I had kids, I don't know if I ever would just do it with just us yeah I don't think so like I know for all the years that like my boyfriend and I have been together we've had like that time like we've always done our presence just us um so I don't know if that like answers your question um yeah no I think it was just more figuring out when does that happen where suddenly like you don't go to someone's mother's house yeah yeah I don't know. I don't have an answer for you this year. Like, but even when I'm thinking it, cause like we live with my boyfriend's mother and yeah. you know, he has, he has brothers who are probably going to come over. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if they're really doing a tree this year just because like their Christmas dinner is being held somewhere else. And I don't think his mom really wants to go through like all the work that of doing process. that. Um, so I have a feeling that like my boyfriend and I will still open our presents like just us mm-hmm. and that will stay the same. So I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know in our <laughs> in yeah, a let future me episode. Um, I'll, we'll see how it goes. I think for, for right now, it's more us like, like I even started this October 31st of like, okay, we need a plan for Christmas. Yeah. Um, cause really just getting to see the family right now is more important, especially because we didn't see see them last year. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of more of our, our priority. Yeah. My last stressor that I wanted to talk about before we moved into more fun things again was do you have like difficulties with how it disrupts your routine at all? Like I find A like little- it definitely gets – it gets in the way sometimes of like my – obviously I don't care as much anymore. I don't know. My brain was just like, I'm over this. But definitely in the past, it disrupted like my kind of fitness. Yeah, I don't care about that around the holidays. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> I'm drinking, I'm eating. Um, but I do find more of a struggle like 
after the holidays, like after the new year when you have it's to like – It's hard to get back Get into back it. to your life. Yeah. yeah. Like, like get back into work mode. Get back into everything. Stop um, eating 15 cookies a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the sugar comas, you know, you got to cut those out and – Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I don't I don't really care that it interrupts my routine like in the moment because I look forward to yeah. it. You know, it's it's something different, it's something exciting and it's change. So I think I just and it, it's also like an opportunity for rest mm-hmm. in some moments. Um but definitely post holidays is a little bit trickier. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's cuz yeah, I don't really care. I really just lean right into the fact that my routine goes to all hell. Um, But then just trying to be like, okay, Rachel, maybe do some yoga. I'm like, or maybe eat 10 Nanaimo bars. It's a hard choice. (laughs) I have to have that conversation with myself. So yeah, 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 definitely the routine can be tricky. But I think the important thing is like, don't feel guilt. Like just just enjoy it because the holidays only come once a year, right? Like, yes, you don't want to be stressed about like, oh, I should be working out right now. Like, who cares? It's it's like a couple weeks out of the entire year. You know, you're not going to lose all your progress. Yep. And it's dark when you wake up and it's dark at 4 p.m. Eat the Nanaimo bar. Yes. Gotta we deserve – I feel like anyone who doesn't live in Canada is like, what? <laughs> I know. They I are know. heaven. They are heaven They are people. delicious. They are delicious. But we just like – we deserve to hibernate during the Christmas season, during yeah. the holiday season. So, yeah. Um, hmm. Were we going to touch on some – trends that we were loving this year i know that you have one in particular you want to talk about i have one in particular (laughs) okay i saw this like probably almost a month ago maybe not quite that long ago but i'm literally obsessed i'm still losing my shit over it um so i have to give a shout out because i first saw it on um, a youtuber that i follow and definitely go check her out um it's madeline van martyr Mm -hmm. and she's like a mom of three under 23 she's like a rock star Mm -hmm. and um i just i just find her videos very enjoyable to watch like on a saturday morning i literally make a coffee and Mm -hmm. watch one of her vlogs and her most recent vlogs have been like shopping for christmas decorations and decorating her house Mm -hmm. um and she got this garland from Hobby Lobby. I, th- I think it's from so Hobby cute. Lobby down in the States. I wish we had a Hobby Lobby in Canada. And it's literally Santa's clothes line garland. That's I love so it. Cute. <laughs> I lost so my mind. Cute. I literally like paused the screen, took a screenshot and sent it to Rachel. And I'm like, I need to find this because it's so cute. So it's all of like, like Santa's jacket, his pants, his hat, and it's all hanging on a clothesline. But it's garland and it's like hanging over her fireplace. I feel like this is really weird that like I know where it's hanging in her house. But um, it's so cute. It was a vlog, guys. It was a vlog. I'm not a stalker. <laughs> and I don't know. I've just been like losing my mind and I think it's so cute. So I want to find it and, and get the same Santa Claus garland. This section of the episode was literally just so she could tell you about that. Literally. That was the only thing I'm loving this year. Thank you. I know. Well, I- I'm going to. I'm going to counteract this by saying one thing that is really grinding my gears. Why is everything white and silver? I knew that was going to be your your grinder this year. Everything. I just, I don't, I mean, it looks nice, but like to me, that's just not Christmas. Like, well, again, that's going back to like the trendy trees, right? Yeah, like it looks nice, but I'm like, okay, when we went shopping for our ornaments for our tree, I was like, okay, everything that we get, will we still use it in 15 years? Because like if we're not, then we're not getting it. Like, Yeah, I think that's the important thing about Christmas decorations. Like you literally only pull them out once a year. Um, They're not something that you throw away. Like no, you need to get some classics and – um. Like I'm not saying, you know, go out and spend all your money on Christmas decorations, but I think don't be afraid to get some like quality Mm -hmm. ornaments and and decorations because like, you know, like my parents, you know, some of the ornaments on our tree 
are pushing 60, 70 years old. Yeah. So, you know, well, that's you want what something that's going to be memorable. Yeah. And that's, that's what we did is we kind of did it. So three quarters, cause it's our first tree and like, I've never had one in my apartment. So we just got kind of, you know, they're nice, but they're the plastic, the more like the plastic based ones from Canadian Tire. Yeah. But those are like your filler ones. And, you know, yeah. if you have kids, if they fall off the tree or a pet knocks them off the tree. Yeah. Then it's not, they're not going to shatter. Right. <laughs> Where then like to accompany that, then I gave myself like, okay, I can get like six boxes of the glass, like handmade ornaments from winners. Right. So like I kind of just counteracted that. But yeah, like I think just for me, like with my view on the on just the trendiness is it just feels a bit like I don't I don't know. I don't want to buy Christmas decorations every single year. Yeah, and I was just going to say that I think that's more wasteful of money, time and resources because yeah. like would you rather spend some money and never have to, you know, spend it again? Like maybe you get a couple special ornaments mm-hmm. every year. But if you were having to rebuy the new trendy thing every year, mm-hmm. like that's a lot of money. I think you're going to spend more money that way. And then also if you're going to just throw out something that's not in style anymore, yeah. like that's so wasteful for the environment as yeah. well. Because like, let's face it, the holidays are probably one of like the biggest trash source times of the year and Mm -hmm. I don't know I think we have to be very careful about that that we're not just getting this year's trend of of tree or ornament or lights and then we just throw it out the next year yeah I love how you're just giving like these great views on this and I'm just like it's not Christmas (laughs) it's not pretty enough for (laughs) It looks it looks too modern. There's not enough color. <laughs> and you're just like, we need to be respectful of the environment and our bank accounts. <laughs> I'm just older, Rachel. It's okay. I'm just older. I know. I just I don't I think because I have a very like I'm set in my ways from childhood because like my mom's tree, like it makes no sense. Like There's just random colors everywhere. Like we have this weird one that's like purple and then one that's like a weird mix between blue and purple. So like it's all over the place and like we've got some green and stuff. So for me, I'm like, I don't even care. Like we don't have to color coordinate it. Just if I like it, slap it on there. I love when trees don't make sense. They have the best stories. Exactly. So I think that's why is I just don't get that into the trends of it. Yeah. And like, I mean, if, if you like silver and gold, go for it. You know, we're not. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. it. Like, we're just saying, you know, don't just get silver and gold because that's what's trendy this year. You know, like, if that goes with your color scheme in your house, whatever, you know, like, obviously go for it. Yeah. No, that, I think that's really my foundational issue with it is it just feels like, okay, what's the trend this year? And then everyone buys it. And I, I don't know. I just don't think that that's very sustainable. Yeah, true. So shall we talk Christmas movies before we close out? Okay, sure. I got a few more things to go off of too. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like here for the holidays, man. Oh my God. September 1st. I have arrived. You're like, this episode is going to be two hours. What I'm are sorry. we talking about? I don't know, but I it's going to be two hours. Are we making this episode maybe just for us? There's a possibility. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we make literally every single episode just for us. With a touch for you. (laughs) (laughs) We just like when people join in on the conversation. It's our journal. We like to share our feelings. (laughs) All right. Well, you you keep going. I am here to listen. You I just I love it because I got teased for being into the Christmas carols by November 15th. And now you're just like, I have a novel of reasons why I love Christmas. Hey, I told you guys, December 1st, that's when Laura shows up for the holidays. So I am it is. here. It is. Yes. All right. All right. I have Continue some, like, to share. Some, like, questions for you. And, like, oh. these are just, like, quick. Like, we don't, we don't have to go super into them. But, like, number one, what do you think of cuffing season? Are you, are you someone who participates in this? 
And in cuffing? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I have a boyfriend. But in like previous years. It's not like you just got a boyfriend <laughs> for the holidays. <laughs> I know. Um, no. Okay. No, I'm the I same. haven't been. I'm the same. I've never felt that need of like I all of a sudden end up with someone, but like it's me. I was – you've heard the disaster dates. <laughs> yeah. We were awkward ho- horse girls. Did you think anyone was trying to cuff us? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it wasn't happening. Okay. Off this topic, what do you think of Christmas engagements? Oh, I swear to God, if anyone proposed to me on Christmas, I would throw a fit. Would you? Oh, okay. I was wondering. I wasn't sure if you were for it or against it. No. I feel like because it's already a special day, like I kind of want my own day. Okay. That okay. I get proposed to on. What about you? What do you think? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I feel like a lot of the time I'm just like – like I same with you. Like I, I want it to be like its own thing. But then, yeah. like, when it comes around, I'm just like, that'd be cute. I don't know. Oh, I think, like, I think, I think it's think like after I see all the, the Christmas engagement announcements, I'm like, oh, that's cute. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I would want to be proposed to, like, at a family dinner. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, have it just be us. Um, yeah. Like, if it was a quiet, like, Christmas morning thing, but like, yeah, like, I, I wouldn't think want that's it. Really cute, but I like wouldn't want it to be like, hey, we're sitting down for dinner. Oh, oh hey, will you marry me? Like. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think the one the one time I would approve of this is if uh, we went away for Christmas to like Zermatt or something, which is just mm-hmm. the most picturesque place ever at Christmas mm-hmm. time. If you propose to me there, yes, yeah, yeah, like the vacation engagements. Like, do I have it already planned out in my head? Maybe, yeah. It might be there. Yeah, I mean, I'm 100% planning to just elope somewhere and tell you about two days before so you have enough time to fly to be my maid of honor. So Sweet. there you go. Sweet. There you go. Get get proposed to on vacation. Get married three days later. It'll be great. Awesome. Well, on the topic of vacation, what do you think of going on a vacation over the holidays? Oh like you're kind God. of skipping everything. Like you're – the. I feel like you're against this. These are some hot button topics. <laughs> you're really testing me today. I feel like I'm being interviewed. Um, I, I have been very against it for most of my life. I think because um, – this, again, is going to turn into a bit of a therapy session. But I – other than – obviously not counting this year, I've only had um, a partner – at Christmas time, one other year, mm-hmm. where my siblings always had somebody since they were like teenagers. Yeah. So I think my p- issue with it was that I had felt like once they started bringing their girlfriends around, that that tradition of Christmas just being me and my siblings departed a okay. bit. So I think that my me being against going away for the holidays was because I was latching on to that tradition of gift giving and being with in our house kind of thing it was like I was preserving I know we're getting really deep we're like now that you know I'm a bit older and also I can just you know anything I put on my Christmas list this year I was like I just wouldn't buy this for myself like I could buy it if I wanted to but like I'm just not going to so like there's nothing on there that I'm really like I want this so badly so like the gift thing is like I still love doing it, but I'm like, if you gave me like a twenty dollar gift and we went away somewhere, golden. But I think too, like since I have my partner and I'm kind of entering into that now like adult perception of Christmas, I feel like my attitude towards it has changed. So uh, we might be going to Zermatt for Christmas next year if you want to come. Okay, cool. Come with <laughs> right. me and my so, family. So you are like traditionally a girl who wants to be home for the holidays, but if it was like the odd Christmas, you would go away. Yes. Okay. And especially like uh, if I have my partner to come with me. Yes. Yeah. So like, yes. yeah, like maybe it's either like all the family is going together or um, just you and your partner. Like, obviously, you're um, not, like, you're not someone who's going to be, like, I'm peace note for Christmas. Like, bye, guys. <laughs> no. No. It would be all the family together. I don't think I would like it if it was just us. Yeah. Unless it was something, like, really special where that was the only time of year you could do it. 
Right. So, yeah. What about you? <laughs> well, I have a funny story. <laughs> okay, let's go. Because you you came for my stories, my Christmas stories. Um, so I actually was away for Christmas one year when I was 16. Okay. And my dad was working in St. Martin at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so like it was kind of like a little bit of a destination holiday Mm -hmm. and okay, I'm not going super deep into the details or else this will become a therapy session, but it was the first time that like I didn't do the traditional, you know, family dinners and, and all of that because, um, we were, I was visiting my dad and, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, we spent Christmas Eve drinking mojitos in a casino. <laughs> Amazing. I love that for you. And Christmas Day on the beach surfing. I love that for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that is like my one non-traditional holiday that that I've had. And it's it's just really funny. Like my dad and I sitting at the blackjack table. I am 16 years old and getting served. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just, you know, we're just gambling. A little bit, like quality time with my father <laughs> cannot but, be understated. <laughs> I love it. That's that's so you and your dad too. I know, right? <laughs> it really is. But my question is, would you do it again? Would I do it again? Um, I think like you, if it was like a family thing, because to me, like that's the most important thing. Like I want to see my family. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we were all going somewhere together, Together, I think that'd be great, but mm-hmm. I still feel like like it wouldn't be the holidays for some reason. Like for some reason, it would just yeah. be like a vacation. Yeah. Um. So I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I think we maybe if we made the choice, like we're all going together, maybe. Yeah. But besides, like the one-off holiday, mm, not really. Like I don't think I would do it. Yeah, I think the location too is also very important because like if I was going to do it I would want to go somewhere that had snow and was Christmassy yeah so I remember I agree with that because when I was in St. Martin for that Christmas like it didn't really feel like like Christmas yeah like we did Mont Tremblant one year in Quebec uh I think like eight years ago needless to say um I was not very happy I wanted to stay home for Christmas but I got vetoed Um, but it was really fun because like that has the, uh, like the village and stuff, which they really do up all Christmassy. So that was a lot of fun, but Mm -hmm. like going to a, going to like a beach destination that wouldn't feel like Christmas to me. Yeah, no, it it really doesn't. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just because we're from Canada. So it's like usually a snowstorm every, every (laughs) single day. freezing. Yeah. We're just used to being really cold that day and it's weird when we're not. (laughs) I mean, do you want to tell uh, the great story of the the lovely blizzard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've got another <laughs> Christmas story. Um, I was there for this one. Yeah, you were there. A lot of people were there. It's kind of weird. Um, so this one happened, I think, three, four years ago? Three years ago. It's 2018. Three years ago? Yeah, it's okay. 2018. Wait. No, I think it was four. I think it was four years ago because I was still in university. Oh, okay. So yeah, it was four yeah. years ago. Wow. Jeez. I know. Um, so I was, you know, doing the traditional going to my mom's for Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. Um, I had done the barn with my friend and it was snowing like crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the roads completely covered. The snow plows were pulled off the roads. And of course, me, <laughs> being me, um, got my little car. I'm just like, no problem. <laughs> I got this. this. Yeah. My mom lives up on top of a hill. So like if it's snowing in town, it's like 10 times worse at her house. And there's um, a lot of hills around. You have to drive a lot of hills around her house. So the top of the hill, it's not too bad, but the bottom of the hill is about four feet deep of snow. Yeah. It's getting up the hill. That's trouble some days. Yeah. And nothing was keeping me from Christmas. No. Right? I had a mimosa waiting for me. I was <laughs> ready. You were ready. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we were having roast beef for dinner. So I was ready. And I, you know, get in my car and I'm so glad that the snow was like that super light fluffy snow. Yeah. Because it was literally 
over the hood of my car. Yep. And, you know, smarter people probably would not have gone, but I am not one of those people. I plowed yep. through it. Thank God I know the roads. Like, I, I could drive them blindfolded um, mm-hmm. because I somehow managed to not get stuck. And I literally, like, and, like, I don't have a four-wheel drive car. <laughs> like, I literally have, like, yep. a little car that's really low to the ground. Um, It just – plow through that snow for me and somehow I did not get stuck in this like giant gully you have to drive through and I just like mm-hmm. literally floored it and I, my car just you know it just did it yeah. um so anyway I showed up at my mom's doorstep it was great you know Christmas was going on but then you know the family started canceling understandably because they were all coming up from the city mm-hmm. and the roads were like really horrendous <laughs> like too yep. bad for the snow plows um, my one uncle, though, like he is the man who was the first one up for Boxing Day skiing. So nothing was keeping him from coming up north. Nope. And so like me, he also plowed his way up um, mm-hmm. for Christmas dinner. And then that was like, like we literally thought it was just going to be like five or six people f- down from 15. And all of a sudden we kind of hear something. Oh, wait, we're forgetting about how I got here. How did you get there? I don't know. You just literally. I was just like, Rachel, there's no one here for dinner. You want to come? I know. Literally, you blasted through the snow. And then then you were like, you know who else is insane? (laughs) Rachel. (laughs) Rachel. So you texted me after you had done that and knew how bad the roads were and said, do you want to come over? We have mimosas. Right. My brothers had left to go to their girlfriends and, you know, Christmas at my house was done. So I was like, okay. So I go, I almost did get stuck like twice going yep. over those hills. And you had a big car at the time. I had a big car. So it like was getting a lot worse. Um, and I I did I did make it there. Thank God. Um, and then, yeah, I, I didn't leave that day. I don't think. She was just spoon feeding me mimosas. <laughs> I'm like, well, you can't drive. You might as well drink. Um, yeah. So I met I met your extended family. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of became part of the family that day. Yeah. And but do you remember that like okay, so like my mom kind of lives on like this cul-de-sac and it's if you don't know it, like it's it's pretty dark. Yeah. Um and narrow and this lady who was house sitting like two doors down mm-hmm. somehow drove into our ditch. Oh my god. At the front of my house. And she's got like two dogs with her. She's looking after her brother's place or something. I don't remember the whole story there. And um, sure enough, like my mom's partner and my uncle go out to try and like pull her car out of the ditch with the trucks. Mm-hmm. And we like don't know this lady. <laughs> we, like, at all. At all. <laughs> this really sounds like the plot of like the strangers starting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and my mom is just like, oh, like, we're like, do you, you don't live up here? Like, cause, you know, it's a small, small little cul de sac. So everyone knows everyone. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, no, I'm just like staying here. I was trying to have dinner with my mom, but I drove into your ditch. Um, so we're like, oh, well, you know, we've got lots of food and no family here. So come mm-hmm. for dinner. So this lady comes in with like her two dogs and mm-hmm. just kind of like moves into our house. Um, yep. For dinner. And yep. the funny thing was, like, she would not stop chatting at my mom's partner the whole yep. evening. Oh my god! Because like, like he was like the hero, you know. He got it. He he got her car out of out of the ditch. Yep. And like we we kind of thought she was gonna steal him at one oh time. Oh my god! And she just wouldn't go home. Do you remember that? It was like midnight, and you know we're still up partying. Um, kind of getting ready to go to bed. And she's still there. <laughs> she oh my was God. Like, at the house until like one or two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Jeez. She really wanted to flirt. I think she was trying to get my mom's partner to go home with her. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So that was that was probably the funniest Christmas. That was a time. That was like one that you you don't forget. And I feel like that's no. like what the holidays are about, you know. You really just have to like go with the flow because ninety nine percent of the time, like the plans do not work out exactly how you expected them to. One last funny story that popped into my mind uh, is my mom made like a giant turkey 
one yeah. year and there was like, you know, 15 or 16 of us. Um, And like, like we can eat, but we don't like finish eat a turkey. Much. Yeah, we don't finish a 20 pound turkey. And um, we had carved all the meat and we always like, like we've got the dark meat eaters in the family and the white meat eaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess someone had put the white meat in the oven to keep oh it warm while they cut the dark meat. And oh so sure enough, only the dark meat for whatever reason like ends up on the table. And the okay. plate is like polished clean before anyone else – like before everyone can get uh, some dinner. Yeah. And everyone's going like, god damn, like we normally don't eat this much. Like we've got some hungry people <laughs> here tonight so anyway we have dinner like you know we we polish off almost everything because like we didn't have a main course almost yeah um and sure enough we go to put the dessert in the oven and out pops like 15 pounds of turkey oh my god (laughs) from the oven oh my god yeah so everyone everyone had turkey sandwiches for many many weeks after that because we had no idea that we left like three quarters of the bird still in the oven (laughs) oh my god Ah, christmas is wild at my house you never know what's gonna happen see that's what happens for you guys we just get rogue hockey injuries yeah you guys have like an aggressive christmas we just have like a wild christmas where you don't know who's showing up or what you're gonna eat (laughs) i know like i think one year like my dad hurt his ribs Another year, like, well, I fell on my knees and I thought I was going to throw up. Um, another year, like, one of them hurt their ankle. And it's just like, maybe we should depart from this tradition when it always ends with somebody with an ice pack. Right. Someone's going to be hospitalized. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't, like, I don't have that many, like, funny, funny stories. I feel like when my mom has uh, Christmas down to, like, an absolute tea with how it runs, especially now that it's just, like, us that goes to it. But, like, I don't know if you remember this, but, like, the winters in this area and just in Canada and Ontario in general have changed a lot over my lifetime. Yeah. Remember when we were, like, 10 and by Christmas time, the snow drifts would be, like, 15 feet high? Oh, it'd be insane. I used to actually, like, go out every Christmas Eve by myself that's what i did at eight years old i nope. lived <laughs> in a really small town um nope. and i would go take a walk because it was so silent and just with like all the snow was always falling uh was always falling and yeah. it's one of my fondest memories about winter i love it well we used to get because my childhood home is in the like literally the middle of nowhere and the drifts on the side of the driveway would get so high like you could just sled down them which is like absolutely wild i'm like how did that how did we ever have that much snow but we are getting a lot of snow right now so i wonder if it'll kind of be like that this year yeah could be it could be shall we talk christmas movies oh yeah oh my god i almost I really want to talk christmas movies <laughs> okay oh my god okay everyone if you are still here Thank, Thank you. you, and we are sorry. Like, please go pour yourself a drink or whatever you like because, yeah, we just kind of went off on a tangent this evening. We just evening. like to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So please take this as like, let's just share our stories, friends, and, you know, definitely share them with us on on Instagram because we love them. We love talking to you guys. All right. Let's, let's finish up with our favorite holiday movies. Top three. Go. The 1964 Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh my God, that was mine too. Has to be that one. The out of tune, high pitched sound that goes off I in know. it. The clingmation. It's just a classic. Absolutely. Do you remember? Classic. You know the scene where like they find out. I did, I think it's when they find out he has a red nose where it makes a sound too. That, high, that sound, that high pitched ringing, is like ingrained in my mind. Right? Oh my god, it's so and when cute. They put the and star like star on top of the tree too, it makes the same sound. I know. And like when he wears, um, when they put like I don't know what exactly it is in the movie, but when they put like they try to make his nose look normal, so they stick something on top of it. Yeah. And how he like talks. Like he has a cold. Oh my yeah. god, it's so cute. <laughs> it's so good. I know they did like a remake of that movie with like updated 
animation, but it's not as good. Yeah, you have to have the original version. And to me, like the holidays do not start until I watch that. I know. Movie, you know, I like, know. So if anyone hasn't seen it, like, please go watch it. I'm pretty also, sure it's already how? running on CBC. <laughs> also, how have you not watched it? Yeah, it's my classic. number one question. It's a classic. All right. It's so, so good. Yeah. Okay. So Rachel, you have that one. Yes, that was one of mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, My next one, and this is just one of those movies that it really doesn't need to be a Christmas movie, but it is, but it's The Holiday. Oh, that's a good one. I never think of that one really as a Christmas movie, but like, I guess it is, but that's a good one. I just love it. And also that was just a period of time where Jude Law owned my soul. He was so gorgeous in that movie. Yes, I loved it. I thought it was just... I don't know. I just – I watch it every year and it just makes me happy. I love it. I love it. Well, my number two is Christmas with the Cranks. I honestly – I think I've literally seen that movie once in my life. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Tim <laughs> Allen. It does not get any funnier. I just – I love that movie. I love it. I love it. Well, my next one, which I guess is technically my final one, but maybe I'll throw another one in there since we had the same one for Rudolph – uh, is The Grinch with Jim Carrey. I just watched that the other night. <laughs> so did I. With I, my dad. <laughs> oh my God. It is so funny. And I swear the older I get, it's just one of those movies where they put in all those little funny jokes just for there, adults okay. that if you- There are a lot of adult jokes because I, I really hadn't watched this movie in over 10 years at least. Yeah. And I'm watching it with my dad and I'm just like- <gasps> I know. <laughs> well, I was watching and like this was like a blink and you'll miss it moment. But you know the scene where the baby Grinch is like dropped off to his his mother's? Yes. And they're like having that party, their little holiday get together. If you blink, you will miss it. But they are like tossing keys into the bowl. Yeah. And I looked, I looked at my boyfriend and I'm like, are they swingers? They're swingers. It's a Did key they just party. Make- did you just make a swingers joke? And I was just like, literally, we both just stared at the screen, like mouth, like mouse agape for like <laughs> five minutes. We were like, how the hell did you get away with that? And I just, it's so funny. And I swear to God, Jim Carrey was not scripted for literally anything. I don't think so. I think they just let him go. Like there's a few I know. things that go along with like the classic Dr. Seuss story. Other than that, it's just Jim Carrey. <laughs> I know. My favorite my favorite scene, just because I resonate with it so much, is when he uh, gets invited to be the holiday cheermeister and he's like trying on all the clothes. Yes. <laughs> and he like steals the yodeler's little outfit and he walks yeah. and he's like, ooh, ah, ooh. And then he's like, that's it. I'm not going. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> that is me. Same. Same. <laughs> so, and like, um, what's her name? Uh she plays um she she's in Mamma Mia. Oh Auntie Tanya. Yeah, Christine. Yes. What is it? It's Margaret Mayhew. Is that what they call yes. her in that movie? Yes, she is Margaret. so funny. Oh my gosh, she's like hilarious. Like what a sexualized movie that like completely I know. went over our heads as as children. I know. And it did not need to be that sexualized, but they really they really went with it. And they were like, like it's this so is campy. Really like that's how sexual it is. It's just like a campy. I know. Thing. I know. They were like, this is rated G, unless you're an adult. Unless you're an adult, then it's rated R. <laughs> so it's so funny. But yeah, no, I love it. I, I It's a classic for me. So yeah. yeah. What's next? Well, my ultimate classic is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Why are you like listing all of these Christmas movies that I have no idea what they are? What? Have you never I'm watched sorry. this movie? <gasps> no. Well, uh, I know what we're doing. Do we need to? We're, yeah. Oh my God. I cannot believe okay. you have not seen this movie. No. It's like the ultimate, ultimate Christmas classic. Come on, I'm Rachel. sorry. Put it together. I'm sorry. Did you not I'm have sorry. a childhood? Apparently not. Oh my God. Okay. Well, we're going to I was watch too this. busy watching Rudolph Claymation. <laughs> Apparently. Did you watch it over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> it's only 40 minutes, so. <laughs> I know. It, it, you could really pack a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, rewatches in one night with that movie. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know what we're watching next time. We're hanging out. We're going to watch uh, Christmas Vacation because – All right. 
it's just not right that you haven't seen it because it's it is like everything that happens I feel like it's like my family <laughs> yep in a way yep <laughs> because it's just like it. like you just get the wild stories um that you just remember forever uh it's it's a fantastic it. movie so we're gonna watch that love it but for most recent releases I really am feeling the princess switch series those are a good time those ones you know what I I don't find a lot of like the Netflix and Hallmark movies like very memorable because it's literally all no. the same plot line but there are yeah. some good ones and there's some really cute ones and I love just like throwing them on in the background um mm -hmm. while I'm doing stuff because they're just like charming feel-good movies it's okay yeah. that you know what the ending is going to be sometimes we need that kind of predictability yeah. and safety in our lives Exactly. Also, I have a really weird question for you. Please tell me you know which movie I'm talking about. But it's an animated movie where I'm pretty sure it's like a little cow who wants to be a reindeer or something. Um, I keep thinking that it's like Noel the cow or I don't know. But there's this little – oh, my God. I can't – I cannot tell you what it's called. But there's this little cow Christmas movie. Give me one second. Okay, you find it out. Um, because there's this other movie and it would like oh, oh my god, I found it. Oh, you found it? Okay. I found it. Annabelle's Wish. Okay. Do you yeah, remember that? I've never heard of that. Yes, you definitely have. I don't think so. It's like, yeah, it's the little cow who wants to be a reindeer. Oh, like I, I recognize the animation. I don't think I ever watched it though. Okay. I did. I I um yeah, that just came out of the depths of my memory. So watch it, I guess. I couldn't tell you if it's good, but. <laughs> okay, I'm pulling another one because um, this one is, okay, it's really obscure, but like I always really enjoyed it when I watched it. It's, mm -hmm. I finally just looked up the name and I literally Googled Santa Raised by Fairies movie. Um, other people Amazing. have looked that up too, so like I'm not the only person, but it's called The Life yep. and Adventures of Santa Claus. And like, I think he was found as like a baby by a, like a fairy colony and they raise him and then like you know it's like the story of him becoming santa claus it's um, a wild experience it was wild but like oddly oh, really good um so like Love it. That's, a, that's a really odd movie but there is a new one it came out last year or the year before on netflix and everyone needs to go mm -hmm. watch it because it honestly like doesn't matter how old you are it's such a good one and it's called klaus mm -hmm. I think I made you oh, watch yeah, I've heard of that. Rachel. <laughs> Maybe. But it's a really good one. Like, it's just beautifully done. The story is is funny, um, kind of like a Tim Burton funny, like a little bit dark, but like just such a feel-good movie at the same time. It's so well mm -hmm. done. Um, so definitely go watch that one. Love it. Um, did you ever see – uh, and this is from kind of like from when we were like little, little, but did you ever see that – like it's not claymation, but it's almost like puppet like the the weird Jack Frost movie where they were like scary little puppet things. Uh, Did you ever see that? We had it on, I had it on VHS. I don't think so. That sounds horrifying. Go look it up. You'll be terrified. Okay. Just look at just look it up right now. I want to be here for your reaction. What am I calling? Jack Frost puppet movie? Pup Christmas movie? Jack Frost horror? Just do Jack Frost puppet movie and go to the images. Oh, I didn't watch this movie because I find this type of claymation extremely disturbing. Isn't it horrifying? I'm looking at the pictures right now and I'm very scared. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to open the pictures. Like, man, claymation movies from the 70s, man, and the 80s yeah. were just scary. I don't know what kids were made of back then. 1979, 48 wow. minutes long. Yeah, like it's just – There's a reason they don't play that on TV. Yeah, it's just entrenched in my memory and we had it on VHS as kids. So obviously we will watch it at Christmas and like I have – it's a nightmare. I'm already I, – I had to close the image because I'm like disturbed right now. I don't know what it is. Like just, the other movie is – what is it? The Dark Crystal or something and it's got okay. like some really freaky like – puppetry going on in there my boyfriend loves that movie and I watched it with him yeah. once and I was like I had nightmares because like it's just I don't know why there's that kind of medium mm -hmm. and I just 
find I'm it really having, disturbing. It's just yeah, really like, disturbing. I'm just, having, I'm just having this distinct memory of like the little Jack Frost character, like moving about, like kind of like turning back and forth, like Ugh. in wonder, but nothing else is moving, just its body. And like it doesn't. I already know. Like that guy is going to show up in my dreams tonight, and it's all your fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just needed somebody to be with me here Thanks. on this. So, um, <laughs> on that note, Christmas holiday season, holidays. Please share your holiday traditions with us. And I'm sorry, yes. this was like a true, really chatty, off the walls kind of episode. <laughs> Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us as always. I think when this comes out, it will be December 14th. So for those of us who celebrate Christmas, only um, two more weeks to go and not even two full weeks. Let me count quickly. One, two. It's like 10 days. 11 days. Only 11 days away. <laughs> so yes, only a few more sleeps. Yay. Yay. And if you do not celebrate Christmas, we just wish you all the best for this season. And we hope you are spending it with your loved ones. Yes, we do. And and with us because, you know, we like hanging out too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening to us talk. We appreciate it as usual. And with that, live like holiday tea. Live like holiday tea.